In the 1930s, Minerva Hoyt, a community activist and desert lover, recognized the threats from humans. She saw beauty in the spiny plants and slithery creatures where others did not. She persuaded President Franklin D. Roosevelt to proclaim Joshua Tree National Monument in 1936. In 1994, as part of the California Desert Protection Act, Congress renamed the area Joshua Tree National Park. Thanks to the efforts of Hoyt and others, this park protects 792,510 acres, more than 80% of it managed as wilderness, where the Mojave and Colorado deserts converge. Welcome to another episode of Joy Meets World. I'm Joy Yugi, and I'm sharing about my adventures traveling across the U.S. visiting all of the national parks on this podcast. I am taking this adventure with my five-year-old foxhound, Quincy, and if he could talk, I'm sure he'd have a ton to share. If you know... Um, if you're familiar with Joshua Tree National Park, then you know that it is an amazing place. And it is the park that I'm going to share about today on the podcast. So where we left off, where I left off, was in Snowflake, Arizona and Petrified Forest National Park, which is in the northeast kind of corner of Arizona. I drove 450 miles, about seven hours, to a little town called 29 Palms, California. So I left Arizona, went to California. 29 Palms is the town over from Joshua Tree. It was a rough drive. It was one of the rougher drives. I think I had been on the road for a month, and so I was feeling tired, a little burned out, um, missing seeing friends and family. Um, and so after that long drive, it, it kind of tired me out even more. But I was grateful to get to Joshua Tree and 29 Palms. Entering California was definitely interesting. I did not know I was going to be stopped along with every other motorist um, to be checked for fruit and plants. Um, so I don't know what would have happened if I had had either, if anybody knows and wants to send me a message or leave a comment and let me know what that's all about. Um, my first interaction with California, not a great one because when I got stopped, the first thing the gentleman said to me who was checking my car was that I had cut somebody else off. Um, and he kind of reprimanded me. So I will just leave it at that. Did I deserve that reprimand? In my opinion, I did not, but <laughs> it was not an, um, a great welcome to the Golden State, but it got better from there, I will say. Um, so on my way, very close to 20, 29 Palms and Joshua Tree, um, is a town called Amboy, and um, it's very close to Route 66. So Route 66, if you listen to my Petrified National Forest podcast, you'll learn that it actually runs through that park, um, and it goes all the way west, um, and it's, it's close. It's on the way um, to Joshua Tree as well. So there's a little town called Amboy, California, and as I was driving, I just noticed sort of these huge piles of dirt to my left. And they kind of reminded me of like canals almost, um, the ends of canals. And I was looking on the map as I was driving. I could see that there were like canal-like structures so that was called the Amboy Salt Flats, come to find out. And it is essentially a dry lake, uh, which was called Bristol Lake, dried up and left salt, a ton of salt on the surface. And that is used as our table salt, like our, some table salt that's sold comes from the Amboy Salt Flats. Another salt 
plot is Death Valley National Park, which I will be going to this month in February. Um, so I'll know a lot more about it. Stay tuned. Make sure you listen for that episode. I really, I loved my Airbnb where I was staying. It was a converted garage um, in a large house, um, converted into an apartment. The yard was fenced in. It was really like vintage with lights and decor. Um, Quincy loved it. He loved getting to run around and just kind of be free in a fenced space. And it was I want to say less than 10 miles from the entrance to Joshua Tree National Park. So super, super convenient. And I'm glad it was because there was so much to see and to do at the park. I didn't even get through um, what every single thing that could be done. Um, and so I'm, I was so glad to be close to my Airbnb. It is, um, the weather was hot during the peak of the day. So it was probably only in the upper 60s, but it was a dry heat and it felt really good. When I was driving around the park and around the area, I was sweating in my car. When I got out or was outside, I like to be hot. So the warmth was welcome. It wasn't bad enough where I had to go inside. Some people might have found it warmer than that. I liked, I liked the warmth. It was just enough. And, you know, it was the end of January. So to be that warm, um, really lucked out. The Joshua Tree National Park has, uh, I went from entrance to entrance. So instead of a full circular loop, like some of the parks have had, um, it just goes from kind of uh, almost like a horseshoe-ish type of loop. And so that's what I did. There's a ton of pull-offs. There's a ton of campgrounds. Some have trails that connect to them. Some are just kind of you points, take a photo um, kind of deals. No dogs are allowed at the park just because it kind of disturbs the other animals and drives them away. So Quincy stayed home and I went by myself. The Joshua Tree, which is what the park is named after, it's all over that area. It's kind of a wild looking tree. Um, it's actually from the Yucca family and defined as a succulent, if you know what those are. But it's almost to me a cross between a it's like a stunted palm tree is how I would say. Like the, the leaves don't come out and they're kind of yucca-ish. It, it looks kind of crazy, but it's the coolest thing I've ever seen um, up close. It can grow to 40 feet tall in its lifetime and it can grow up to an inch a year. It has these like splayed arms, like I said, and it does flower, has white flowers. And um Apparently, it starts flowering in February, so I think I just missed it because I did not see any blooms, which really sucks. I would have loved to see that, but it, it was cool just as it was as well. The Joshua Tree, I did not know this, but I found out that legend has it the Mormons named the Joshua Tree. As they came west, they saw it and it reminded them of the biblical character lifting its hands up to God um, to kind of help it conquer, conquer the West, conquer the desert. That's the legend anyway. May or may not be true. Nobody really knows, at least what I could find out where the name came from. So the Joshua Tree was great. They were all over the park, but there was so much more to the park too. So there was an area called the Jumbo Rocks, and honestly, it was just one pull-off. But again, these rocks, rock formations were everywhere in the park. It wasn't just this one spot. And what these were, or just what they sound like, it it's like a giant was playing with rocks and just like got called in for dinner and just left them scattered there. I mean, it's just these gigantic boulders, honestly, piled up everywhere. Um, not like normal mountains or rock formations, you know, cliffs. It's just like boulders, but like the size of houses and apartment buildings just scattered throughout the desert. 
So that was really neat to see. You can hike all over them. You can climb all over them. They go for miles. Apparently there are trails. There are no marked trails, I will say that. Um, and I'm not a fan of getting lost. Um, so I would go pretty far to where I could still see people, but um, not too far that, you know, I couldn't see the, the parking lot or how to get back, which you know, in a desert, um, it's not that hard to do. And also there were a ton of people there. I went on a weekend at, uh, after lunch and it was crowded. Every parking lot was full. People were parking on the sides of the road. Um, there were a ton of people there, I think just cause the weather was perfect and it was a weekend. The second place I hiked was called Hall of Horrors, and the name really got me. I had to see what this was, and honestly, it was a similar rock formation to the Jumbo Rock, so piles of these boulders. There is a slot canyon. If you go um, all the way back, there's a slot canyon, which just, just means two of these giant boulders are leaned up against each other, and it just forms what it sounds like a hall that you can walk through. So that's a slot canyon. There were rock climbers on a sheer face of one of these boulders, and it blew my mind because it was, there was, it was just literally a smooth surface. And so I stopped and watched them for about 10 minutes which was neat to see. The next place I stopped is called Cap Rock. Again, it's one of the giant boulders, but it has this smaller boulder on top that looks like a baseball cap on top of a head, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can see pictures of this all on my Instagram reel and um, on my stories, so make sure you go on Instagram and look at that. It's kind of cool to watch. The last kind of thing that I did was called Keys View, and I honestly didn't know what I was getting into when I decided to do it. I just, it just said it's a view, so I thought, oh, great, I'll go look at the view, and then I'm driving, I'm driving, and I'm driving, and look, come to find out, look at the map, it's like another, you know, 15, 20 minutes off the beaten path to go see this view. So I debated, do I even want to use my time driving to a spot where I can just see a view or go hiking? And I had already been driving, so I just decided it's fine. I'm just going to go see what this is all about. It's called Keys View, and it is 100% worth the extra time and the drive. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. So it is, Keys View is at the crest of little San Bernardino um, Mountain, kind of that mountain range. It's like the highest point that you climb up and below you see the entire Coachella Valley in California for miles. And what's the coolest part is the San Andreas Fall runs through the valley. So you're looking at that too. And then there's mountains, huge mountains on the other side of it. And you're standing on a mountain range too. So you literally have a 360 view of the mountain ranges and then the Coachella Valley and the San Andreas Hall. It, the pictures do not do it justice as is usual. The videos don't do it justice. It is mind blowing. It's probably the coolest thing I've ever seen. So after that, I was finished with Joshua Tree National Park. Um, they had you actually show your pass when you left the park. I guess maybe some people sneak in or they have to be careful, you know, how many people they let in and out um, because they are letting people in both entrances. So I thought that was interesting. So that was it for my trip to Joshua Tree and 29 Palms. I think my biggest takeaway, the biggest, like, the awesomest thing is that I – would 100% want to go back and explore some more. Um, I feel like I, I got, I really had a good time at this park and spent some good time there, but I would, I would spend a week there. Like there's so many hikes you can do. You could climb on the rocks forever. You know, you could camp there. Um, 
and see the stars at night. Um, I mean, there's just, there's so much time that can be spent at this park that I personally would want to spend at it. I think the lesson that I learned from this park, my biggest takeaway is not to go on a weekend to just like take a half day of work or leave it in an early afternoon and, um, go to the park. I just think it's one of the mo more popular parks, um, especially in California and maybe the other ones in California will be like this too. Um, but just not to go on a weekend. if I don't have to because it's going to be a little cray cray. Next up, I'm actually going to be taking a break from visiting the national parks. I will be staying in California, but I am going to be visiting a city that I've never been to before, but I've always wanted to go to that I've heard amazing things about, and I've just had this burning desire to visit for the longest time, and that is San Diego. So the next po podcast episode will be visiting San Diego, California, and I can't wait to share my experience with you guys. A little housekeeping before I sign off. Um, make sure you follow me and leave any comments you have about the podcast on Instagram or DM me there. That's how you can get in touch with me and um, watch my reels and see my stories and my posts and just kind of live the trips with me. Also, you can watch all of these podcast episodes on YouTube. It's me talking. If you're more of a visual person, um, you can, that's the way to do it. You can just watch me on there, subscribe, um, to make sure you get the updates when the, when the new videos are posted. Um, and then if you could subscribe to this podcast, rate it and review it, that would be awesome. And we can get more people, um, interested in visiting the national parks in the U.S., which is always a good thing and going out on adventures. Until next time, I wish you happy travels wherever life is taking you.